hello again. First and foremost, if you have not read part one, please do so because it'll get you sped up and whatnot. Otherwise, everything I write here will not make sense to you whatsoever. With all that being said, let me explain what happened over the course of the past few nights. My wife and I have been hearing the same noise up in the attic almost every 10 minutes, as if whatever it is, is wanting us to come up there. I want to get out of this house and never look back, but we have nowhere to go at this point. My family lives out of state in Florida, and my wife's family lives out of state in Nevada. Plus, we cannot just leave everything we have on a whim. My wife and I have not had a good night's sleep in three days ever since I made the mistake of opening up that journal. We are beyond thrilled that some of you have given us advice on how to either deal with whatever it is or how to go about it. We were able to contact the Michigan Paranormal Research Association to see if they could find anything we could not. They were prompt in their response and should be coming to our house this Thursday to conduct an investigation. As I have said, I am not truly a skeptic as I believe there are things that cannot be explained. But I am hoping and praying that they find nothing out of the ordinary. I threw the journal away in a trash can and watched as the trash man came and emptied our trash for the week. I figured if I just got rid of the damn thing, everything would go away, but it didn't. Despite watching as the trash man dumped our trash can with the journal in it, the noises continued throughout the day. While my wife was at work, I tried my best to drown out the sound of the thumping any way I could. Nothing seemed to work. The noises still happened in 10 minute intervals. Thump, thump. It was driving me crazy. I could not take it anymore. I pulled down the ladder to the attic and went back up there one final time, screaming at whatever was up there to get the fuck out of my house. I know, it sounds stupid, but I had no idea what to do. I was going insane. I looked down at my feet and there, covered in some dust and debris was the German. I couldn't speak. I couldn't move. All I could do was stand there, looking down at the journal that I just saw the trash man throw away not two hours ago. How was it still here? It had been two days since I had last opened the journal, the time I saw my name written on the pages. I shook my head in disbelief ran my hand through my hair and closed my eyes. I kept telling myself the moment I opened my eyes, the journal would be gone. There it was, daring me, taunting me to open the journal again. With a huff, I picked up the journal and walked down the ladder from the attic. I slammed the journal down on my table in the living room and paced around for a moment, contemplating my next move. I was a desperate man, and desperate times cause for desperate measures. I called my childhood pastor whom I hadn't seen in probably 12 years since I denounced the church. He didn't seem too pleased to hear from me, but I told him everything that was going on. I told him about the noises, Amelia, Abigail, my name in the journal, the way the journal cannot be destroyed. He listened took a deep breath and asked for my address. He would be on his way. Luckily, my childhood pastor was still at the same church as he was before. Just a short 35 minute drive from my house. Within the hour, he arrived. And the moment he set foot in the house, he took a step back. Something evil lives within this house. He sat shaking his head and giving a look I could only describe as fear. I made him a cup of coffee and showed him the journal. 
The first thing he said was that I was a fool for opening the journal in the first place. He was right. I was. Am. A fool. He pulled out a cross from his pocket and laid it on the table next to him and proceeded to open the journal. He read the entries from Amelia and swallowed his fear as he found out what was transpiring almost 100 years ago. He got to the page dated December 8th that had my name on it. He turned the page, looked down at the journal, then back up at me. What? I questioned, looking at his body language and wondering what was going on. You told me the last entry was dated December 8th, correct? He said, his voice shaking. Yeah, it said, hello, Daniel. If I remember correctly, I responded, taking a sip of coffee. Of course, I remember what it said. How could I forget? He gave me the journal and my heart sank to the bottom of my stomach. Fear was overtaking my body like a plague. 9th of December, 2016 Daniel won't play with us. Abigail and I are starting to think Daniel doesn't like us. All we want to do is show him a better place. A place that Abigail showed me. I could not believe what I was reading. But I collapsed on the chair across from Pastor Jones and put my hands in my face, shaking my head. I couldn't even look at the damn journal anymore. It was making me physically sick. Pastor Jones grabbed the journal from my hand and turned the page. I heard him gasp with fear. What, Pastor? What now? I said, hiding the fear in my voice the best I could. And Pastor Jones said nothing. He stood up and walked towards me and gave me a hug and told me that my wife and I needed to get out of the house as soon as we could. Go on, leave, stay at a hotel and move far away from here. I was shaking my head in disbelief. What are you talking about, Pastor? There must be an explanation for it. I couldn't even finish my sentence before he sternly interrupted me. No, my child. Go. Run. Now. He said, grabbing his coat and abruptly leaving the house. I ran out of the house trying to get his attention. But he got into his car and drove off, refusing to make eye contact with me. And there I stood on my porch, distraught and completely shaken. I went back inside and sat down on the couch and stared at the journal again. Against my better judgment, because I'm a fool, I opened the journal and saw what caused Pastor Jones to leave as abruptly as he did. 10th of December. 2016. Abigail and I watched as Daniel slept last night. He tosses and turns a lot. There seems to be a lot on his mind. All we want to do is play with him. I felt sick to my stomach. I closed the journal and threw it across the room. Watched as it hit the wall and fell to the ground below. I started to cry. Yes, I admit, I cried. I cried my freaking eyes out, but I had no idea what else to do. It was at that time I heard the front door open and my wife came home from work. She saw me sitting on the couch, sobbing into my hands. She came over to ask me what was going on and all I could do was point at the journal. She seemed confused. I thought you were going to throw this damn thing away, Daniel, she said visibly upset. Oh, baby, I did. I watched as the trash man dumped the trash can myself, but I found it in the attic soon after. I said, sobbing into my hands between words. Maybe it's another journey. I interrupted my wife mid-sentence, just as Pastor Jones did me. It's the same damn journal. Steph, What's worse is that Pastor Jones was even afraid of the damn thing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 
You brought a pastor into this house? It's bad enough we're having some damn paranormal investigators coming this week. $500 to do it. Mind you, to look at this house. I understood her anger. I understood why she was so upset. She took a deep breath, sat down next to me and shook her head. She apologized for getting upset. The lack of sleep was the cause. I kissed her on her forehead and told her what had happened. I told her about the new journal entries from the other day and how they were watching us sleep. I showed her the pages and for the first time since the first initial day, she was visibly frightened. She was starting to understand that this wasn't in my head. This was real life. Talk to them, my wife said, handing me the pen. You must be out of your fucking mind, standing up and throwing the pen down. Babe, listen, maybe if you talk to them, they will go away. Maybe all they want is a friend. She made a solid point, but regardless, it seemed incredibly stupid. I sighed, sat down, and grabbed the pen and wrote on the same page as the last journal entry. Hello, Amelia and Abigail. Please do not take my lack of communication as me not wanting to be your friend. I'd love to be your friend. All I ask is you stop the thumping noises. My wife and I would like to sleep for a change. Thank you. Regards. Daniel. I closed the journal and kissed my wife. It was at that time that I noticed that the thumping had stopped. For the first time in a few days, the 10 minute intervals of thumping had stopped. Perhaps my wife was right. All I had to do was befriend them. We relaxed the rest of the night, watching Netflix and even taking a nap on the couch. The thumping was gone. We slept all the way into morning. I awoke on the couch and my wife was away at work. I looked down at the table and saw that the journal was still there. I smiled. On a hunch, I opened the journal and flipped to the page where I had responded to them. 11th of December, 2016. Come to the attic, Daniel. That's all it said. This was yesterday, and as of this writing, December 12th, I have still not responded. The thumping started again, and it happens every 10 minutes. I'm at loss for words. The paranormal investigator should be here Thursday but I'm not sure I can wait that long. My wife and I are deathly afraid. When she came home from work yesterday, I showed her the response and she just shook her head. She's ready to leave this house too, but at the same time, we have nowhere to go. We don't even have enough money to live at a hotel for an extended period of time. The only options at the time, or to stay at the house until the investigation is over, or take a trip down to Florida to stay with my parents. I don't want to go up to the attic again.